All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to put together this chicken pattern. So just a reminder, this is a mix and match pattern. So what you get are a variety of chicken bodies, a variety of chicken parts. We've got wattles and a bunch of eyes and tiny little pupils for the eyes and combs, all different kinds of combs, and beaks, and lots of different feet. So every chicken is gonna include all of those parts. And the fun thing about it is that you can put it together in a lot of different ways. So this is a longer video where I'm gonna talk you through a lot of different options um, using just one block as an example. And then I'm also going to do the entire sample quilt that I'm making is gonna have 14 blocks. So I will do shorter videos, just time-lapse videos without me talking through them of all of the other 13 blocks that you'll see in the cover sample on this pattern. So you'll be able to see me putting all of those together, but this is the one where I'm really talking you through all of the different options. So since it's a mix and match pattern and there's a, you can put it together any way you want, there are no markings on the back. Normally my patterns have dotted lines and things to mark where things go or um, we use a light box to position them. In this case, it is all you. So I've got my block here. My background block is already quilted because that's the way I like to do it. I'm gonna just peel off the paper backing and I'm gonna start out by just putting the body on the block and I'm gonna move that around a lot. So the next thing I like to do is put in some feet and I have feet pointing in both directions in the pattern. So I want both of his feet facing in the same direction. Now, these are a lot longer than they need to be and I can trim them off if I need to, but one of the reasons that I make them longer, I'll put this over the feet so that it looks a little bit more like it would be, so if he's just standing upright, you're gonna have pretty short feet because I need this to fit in a 10 inch block. But if you wanted him to be looking down, maybe he's gonna be pecking at a little worm because I added a couple little worms to the pattern. Then you want to have a longer block, a longer leg for the back so that it looks like the, the, when you do that, you want the legs to either be pointed straight up or you can point them a little bit at an angle. If it's straight up, it feels more like he's just curious looking down. If you point them at an angle to the body, it makes it look like he's bending way over or it can make it look like he's really startled and he's like kind of jumping back. So you can get a lot of emotion and narrative into your blocks depending on how you put them together. And I've found that the best way to do this isn't necessarily to plan all that out in advance, but just start putting the pieces down and then see what happens. And you will suddenly notice that, uh, that your design looks like it's doing something. So um, just play with it and be open to the possibilities. So I'm gonna take the worm out right now and I think I'm gonna make this guy just standing upright. So I may trade this out for another shorter leg and see save some, I have some shorter ones and some longer ones, and I may save the longer one for when I really want that. And then I will trim these shorter once I decide for sure how long I want that to be. But you know what I can do right now is go ahead and peel off the paper backing, because it is not fun to get everything laid out the way you like it and then um, Take it to the ironing board and iron it down and realize you forgot to peel off the paper backing because then it will not stick. Not that I've done that ever. All right, so here's a couple of legs. We've got him just slightly leaning forward. Gives him a little, little personality. Now we're gonna play with the comb. So I've got a couple of different combs and you just put the comb at the top of the head and figure out what you like. You know, maybe before I put the comb on there, maybe I'll put his eyes in there first. We'll start playing around with his eyes. So all of the larger eye pieces are the, they're all big circles. 
and they're all identical. So just grab any two of the large eyes. I'm not gonna worry about the pupils yet, but you can make him look, let's give him a beak too, because all of these things kind of work together. We won't worry about the waddles just yet, but I like to tuck the beak behind the head most of the time. So if we have his comb kind of angled back like that and two eyes on there and his beak pointing forward, he looks like he's looking this direction. If we put this kind of comb on his head, like a straight forward comb and put the eyes more centered on the head here and maybe put the beak like this or choose a different beak that doesn't have as strong an angle on the top of it, but this one would still work. Now he looks like he's looking forward. And the fun thing about chickens is that they look in all different directions, including back over their head sometimes. So we can do this also, put this beak over here and move his eyes a little bit more this direction. And now he looks like he's looking back that way. So lots of fun that you can have with that. I think I'm gonna do that with this guy. We're gonna make him look backwards. I like that. So I'm gonna peel off the top of that. And I can also change the angle on this. So I right now I've got an angle on the top of the head and I can just line it up with that angle, but I can also make him look like he's looking back over his shoulder and up high by just angling that down that way. So that comb gives you lots of options for helping to define which direction he's looking. And sometimes I like the eyes to overlap the comb just a little bit. Not always, they don't have to. So you can also put in two beak pieces. If you want him to be squawking, just give him two beak pieces and you can overlap them a little bit. Do that so he's not quite so wide mouthed. There we go, so now he looks more like he's got his beak open. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So, should have pulled off. You know what, I'm gonna take, instead I'm gonna take two of the skinnier triangles because the beaks are all the different widths and shapes. They're all triangles, but they're all different shaped triangles. So I'm gonna use two of my skinnier triangles and he's gonna be squawking about something that he sees behind him. There we go. And I actually like the top one to be sticking out a little bit more than the bottom one. So now, just double check and make sure my comb is still overlapping the head. It is. And now get the eyes in there. You know, I think I'm just gonna do one eye on this guy. That's the other option. You can do just a single eye. Um, and now I'm gonna give him a couple of waddles. And we've got, these are just triangles as well. And if you just do two triangles, kind of at any angle you want, just play around with them and see what you like. I like to do two triangles touching at the top or overlapping a little bit. You know what, I think I want this more on his body. Just because it shows up a little bit better on the purple than it does on the brown. And then the last step is to give him a pupil in his eye. Now, these pupils are small. I am not going to lie. It's not always fun to do the, the stitching around such small shapes, but you have options and the pattern actually has a link to a post that tells you about all different kinds of options that you have 
for stitching down the eyes or options that don't involve stitching at all. Probably if I weren't, I'm gonna applique, applique mine, but if I weren't, I would probably choose to use uh, fabric paint. I have a post that reviews my favorite brands. I think my favorite brand is called Scribbles. It says it in the post and has a link to it, but it dries with a little three-dimensional finish. It's, it's raised up a little bit and it's shiny, which really gives some nice light to the eyes. And I like using that for eyes a lot, but there are lots of other options as well. So get the pupil in there and the pupil will also tell you what he's looking at. So you could have him, whoops, looking down. I should have gotten like some tweezers or something for the, for the post. You can have him looking down. You can have him uh, with his head turned backwards, but still looking forwards. You can really get a lot of expression with the pupil. I'm gonna have him looking in the same direction that he's pointing. So there he is, pretty happy with that guy. I'm going to carry him over to my ironing board and I'm gonna fuse everything in place. I'm gonna trim off the tops of these legs first just so that there's not quite so much tucked underneath the body, just so I don't have as many layers of fusible on top of each other. So I'm gonna trim off the top of my legs, top of these legs, bring it to my ironing board, fuse everything in place, and then I'm gonna do some outline stitching around it. That's gonna hold the pieces in place permanently so that this can be washed. And it's also going to give some definition. Normally, I outline all of the pieces with black thread. I like the simple kind of cartoony look that that gives. But on these chickens, since there are no pieces that need definition, um, the definition of a line, so I'm not, I don't have a muzzle on top of a face or a brown face on a brown body where I want that black line to help create a clear line. So I think I'm gonna do something a little bit different with this and instead I'm gonna outline each piece with a thread that matches it or is just a little bit darker than the color of the fabric and that's just gonna give it a little bit different look than the rest of my quilts. So that is how you put together all of the mix and match pieces for chickens and I cannot wait to see the chickens that you make with this pattern. All right, here is that finished chicken. I did all of the outline stitching around him. Normally I outline in black thread, but this time I just outlined in a slightly darker shade of each color. And just in case you're curious, um, you actually can stitch around those eyes. You can see here, I'm gonna pull it in close enough to make sure you can see, that little black circle there is where I stitched around that eye. So it is definitely possible, that's the smallest piece in there. Um, but if you don't like doing it, don't do it. There are lots and lots of other options and the pattern has links to all of them. But now I wanna show you all of the other ways you can put these same basic shapes together. So this guy was looking back over his shoulder. So I've got a few more like that. So this one's looking back over his shoulder and up. And this one is also looking back over his shoulder. And this one looks like he's walking a little bit. You can see on these other two that the legs are pretty much straight and parallel with each other. So that's a chicken that's just standing still. As soon as you start getting some angles to those legs, they start looking like they're walking a little bit. So this guy is just kind of moseying. He's a slow walk. There's nothing um, panicky looking about that. Now we've got some chickens that are looking straight ahead, which means you've got both eyes and the beak is in the middle of that neck piece and I did not include waddles on those. I usually think they look kind of odd just floating in the middle of the neck, so I just leave them off. So um, again, facing forward. This one's facing forward and the reason he looks pretty awkward, I mean, he's got the eyes going up, so he's definitely looking at something up in that direction, but the thing that makes him look awkward and kind of gawky is that I've got these feet facing in opposite directions. So just wanted to show you what that does. And then one more facing forward. Again, the legs are basically pretty parallel. He's standing still and because I angled this piece, it looks like he's just kind of leaning forward. But so like, he, he was just leaning forward, maybe he would have pecked a little something on the ground, but then something over here caught his eye, so he just turned his head. Now, we've got some chickens that are facing the normal direction, not back over their shoulder, but facing away from the bulk of their body. And this one, you can see I've got lots of angle on his legs here, so he looks like he's running, or she. 
So this one, the eye, the pupil is facing forward and then um, these legs make it look like they're running. And now we've got facing forward, but looking back also while they're moving. So this is kind of telling a little bit of a story. Maybe there's something that's making him nervous or anxious. And now we've got um, his turned forward, but another facing back over his shoulder. But I put a little worm down here and I made that pupil look right at the worm. And so that's another way that you can get some story in there. Just changing where the pupil goes. Here's another one facing forward, but looking behind him. And now we've got facing up. And I don't think I showed you this option when I was just showing you earlier in the video all of the different kinds of ways that you could play with the shapes. But looking straight up is another option. Instead of putting the comb on the short top of the head, you put it on the side and have the beak coming off the top. Here's another example of that. You can do that with any of the shapes. And then I have looking down. So this is a very particular body piece that allows them to either look like they're stretching out sideways or if you angle it down to look like they're looking down, probably to eat something. And then one more looking down and I enjoyed putting the worms in these ones where they're looking down because he is definitely getting ready to eat. So that is a whole bunch of different options and that is just the tip of the iceberg. This is the mix and match chickens pattern. You can get it from Shiny Happy World and I can't wait to see all the different chickens you make with it.